Hi guys, Scott here, and welcome back to episode 2 of our satisfactory playthrough. Uh, in this episode, what we're going to focus on is essentially getting our automation a bit more up and running. We've just unlocked the power poles, uh, so we're going to relocate these smelters over near the, the mines there, start building some power poles, and get the power hooked in. Let's have a quick check of our uh, power generation here, to see how it's going. You can see it's down to 414 leaves already. Uh, I think, did we unlock the biomass? Yes, we did. So one of the things we can do is if we grab all these leaves out of here and we go to biomass, we can basically craft that down. Also note that we unlocked crafting stations as well, so we can start using those to do some of the legwork uh, of converting the iron ingots and copper ingots into actual products such as the, the wire and the rods. Uh, you can see that's compressed down into sort of 200 uh, biomass, which is cool. So we'll just store that for now, store the leaves away as well. And uh, have a little think about what we need to do. One of the things we're going to have to do is get limestone so we can build those power poles. Uh, for that, we're going to need a miner, which basically means we're going to have to build some iron plates quickly. So we'll grab some iron plates from here. Uh, it does help to walk around with some materials on you, particularly in the early game, uh, just so that you can craft things on the fly. Um, let's get the portable miner. Just a couple of those should do for now. I'll do. You don't need a massive amount of limestone, uh, but it is very, very useful. Converting it to concrete does take time, though, uh, when you when we do end up crafting that. So we'll just drop that down somewhere around here. There we go. Now notice when it, we drop that down, do you see? It says limestone impure. Impure is such a weird word, but basically it means it's less than normal. This thing is not a particularly dense amount of limestone it's impure uh, so when it's been smelted down we won't get as much bang for buck out of it is what it uh, essentially means let me grab this iron from over here so these things can carry on otherwise they just sit there doing absolutely nothing which is fine it's the downside they're like little children you have to run back to them and keep checking that they're behaving we're going to stick this iron ore into um, the smelter here. We've only got one smelter online until we get those power poles, and we need limestone to get the power poles, so it's all a bit of a chain thing. We'll grab that out of there so we can carry on. Let's see how far they've got. Okay. That should get us going a little bit. We don't need many power poles for this. We only need like a few to get us over to that. Because the, the cables do actually stretch quite far. Right, there we go. So build some of that concrete. Like that. And then if we have a look at power poles. 13. We can build about 13 power poles with that lot. Which is more than enough. So what we'll do is think about our power routing here. What we're probably going to want to do is come out of our hub and go this way we will need to go up to the copper we'll also need to have some miners here i guess so we'll put one there and then we're going to come across over here we'll put one maybe like there and then we'll have another one uh, in between those if we can oh we can't afford it what am i missing oh well that should be enough for now we can add more later I'll just quickly grab this smelter. Let's grab both of these smelters. Right, well, should now be able to connect that power line to, sorry, yeah, that power line there to our power pole. Now you see it says one of four. They can only take four connections, uh, but that's fine. Let me just grab a few more of those iron rods. We can't convey anything yet. We don't have conveyor belts unlocked, unfortunately. So that's going to be a bit of a restriction. If you look at the, the milestone upgrade, the next hub upgrade gives us conveyor belts. At the point where we get conveyor belts, we'll have smelters and constructors, and uh, but we won't have miners, I don't think. So we'll just, But we will be able to throw iron ore in the back and have products coming out the other side, which will be fantastic. Uh, but it's going to require a few things to get there. So let's continue. Uh, press the 2 key. It gives us the power line. Connect that to there. 
connect that to there. As you can see, they do have a quite a large span on them. And then we'll have another power pole about here. Connect that to that. Cool. That power pole there is going to effectively connect into those um, to those miners when they come online. But the smelters are going to be back here, so we'll, we'll just build another connection there. Like that. And we shall now... Oh, you press... I've not actually said have I. You press the Q key to bring up this stuff. Probably a bit late now. You probably figured that out. Uh, smelters are going to go here. So we shall have... Can we get rid of that? Smelters are going to go... We'll have one there. So we've got... In mind here, we've got the idea that there's going to be a miner coming out of there, and we're going to be feeding straight into it. Uh, we'll put one there like that. Make sure we've left enough of a gap, which I think we have. And then we're going to connect that into there. That into there. And we are going to now say, you're going to be iron ingot, and we'll throw a bunch of iron in there. And you are going to be iron ingot. I'll throw a bunch of iron in there. And then we're going to grab the stuff out of here. This game does turn into a lot like Factorio in a way. It does turn into a lot of iron required. Um, and less so of the copper. Now, constructors. Constructors are very, very useful. We can't build them yet because I need to have some more... I need three reinforced iron plates. So I'll grab those iron ingots out of there. Constructors will build in front, or just not too far away from, the smelters. Um, the constructors, I guess, that's the real start of our manufacturing, if you like. That's where we start to make things um, from all of these wonderful materials that we're collecting. Let's grab all of that. Now, at some point, you'll hear everything go boo, and that's when you've run out of power because this has been expended, or where your consumption exceeds your production, at which point the fuse trips and the whole thing shuts down. But I'll let that happen, and we'll deal with that uh, so that you can see what that's like. Let's turn all this concrete off for here. Now, we're going to need reinforced iron plates, and if you look at a reinforced iron plate, it needs screws and iron plates. So we're going to have to make a bunch of screws. Like so. And then we can make some reinforced iron plates. So you can already see the beginnings of uh, the production chain. I need to put some stuff down because we're carrying too much ore around with us. Let's put all that in there for now. All the leaves. So yeah, the iron, iron ore goes into iron ingots. Ingots go into rods. Rods go into screws. Screws go into reinforced plates. And... The manufacturing times of these things is different, and that will need to feed into your kind of optimization, if you like. There are different ratios, and also it depends on how rich the, the vein is that you've got. And even whether you put power kind of nodes into your miners and things like this, because, you know, the quicker they're throwing things out, well, the quicker stuff is that is going to come at you, and the more you've got to belt it away and smelt it. Um, but that can be solved later. Can we do any of this yet? Ten concrete. We can sort that out. We can sacrifice some of this stuff to the gods, can't we? Uh, can we drop any of them in? Ten cable. Seventy-five iron plates. It's a lot of iron plates. That's a lot of iron plates. 75. Okay, we'll, we'll just leave that for a second. I think we'll focus on making the constructors. We need some more cables. We could almost make... If we make one more of these, and then make a whole bunch of cables. Let's have a look. So now we can make seven constructors out of that. Or well, four constructors. That's more than enough. So let's do that. Now, a crafting station, uh, we might want to consider building a crafting station like over here, 
just so that we don't have to keep running back to the hub every time we want to craft things. Uh, so what I'm going to do is, let's think about this. We want, stuff is going to be coming out of here. This is not very level. Uh, if you have, if you have, um, oh, we can't make foundation plates yet, can we? Dang it. I was going to say, we've got concrete, but we don't have the tech unlocked for it to build the foundation plates because this is very uneven ground. So for now, we'll just build some constructors over here and we'll probably move them later. Uh, we'll just put it there for now. We'll line another one up. Let's leave a little bit of a gap. Like that. Now, let's say we want to make iron plates with this thing. Then all we've got to do is put the iron ingots in it, which we're getting from the other place. So we need to drop power into here as well. So we need a power pole. And I need copper for that. That's great. Oh, the limited backpack is so real. Okay, we'll take those for now. While we're here, we'll load them up. The running around will stop soon, don't worry. Put them there, we'll chuck that into there. It's better to just try and keep things going because you always need more stuff, so. Uh, perhaps we should go and grab that copper as well up here really we should be smelting that but like i say the copper is it's only really used for the wire initially it's not like in fact torio copper becomes very very necessary for things like uh, green circuits and ultimately red circuits and you tend to use a lot of copper a lot of the time currently in this game the tech tree is such that there's only really the um there's only really the uh, copper wire that you're actually using it for so it's not it's not critical that you have a lot of it in fact you just end up overproducing it constantly uh, i think i had two storage chests full of copper wire <laughs> it just i and, and wasn't using it you know so there's definitely a rebound's got to happen somewhere along the line but that's all part of the factorio complexity um that has been established for years it was satisfactory is going to have to um come up with its own i think uh, right, let's go for... We need wire, don't we? So we'll build a bunch of that. And we'll build a bunch of cables. Get more wire. Try and make sure we've got a few things so we can construct some stuff here. Okay. Power pole. We shall get a power pole. We'll have the feed coming through from that power pole to this one. So we'll put that over to we'll put that here, actually. We'll have another one here. Just to feed into that. And then feed into that. And that will feed into that. So, if we were to feed these with stuff now, if we were to feed it with um, iron ingots, which are those things, <clears throat> it will start to produce iron plates. Similarly, on this one, if we feed, if we tell it we want it to make iron rods, and we feed in iron ingots, it will start to make iron rods. But again, it will stop once it fills up, so there's nothing we can do about that. Now what we need to focus on is getting our tech on lock. So let's grab all this stuff out of here. Keep the machines going. Honestly, these things extract ore so quickly. It's impossible to keep up with them. I think two would have been enough. Three was perhaps overkill. Okay, chuck that in there. Grab material coming out again. Okay, now we're starting to automate stuff in parallel, which is great. We're not stuck with making one thing at a time. But notice, like, how slowly these things are making. Like, iron ingots, uh, really slow to make iron ingots. Um, and iron plates, like, really slow to make. So we're going to have to... Top right there, it tells us what we need. 75 plates, 10 cables. Like, cables are easy. We'll do the cables now and throw those in. 
because I really want to get conveyor belts. Conveyor belts is going to simplify life so much. Okay, we've got enough for cables, actually. So we'll drop that in there. And uh, the iron plates, we've got 75. We'll drop as many as we can. So we just need another... In fact, you know what? We'll just handcraft these so that we can get conveyor belts. And then we can really start cooking on gas, as it were. Now, I'm expecting the power to shut down soon because... Um, I've not put any fuel in the fire. There we go. Upgrade. Oh yeah. Let's have a look at this. Congratulations. Yeah, a... You have unlocked new buildings and blueprints, which can be found in the build menu and craft bench respectively. We'll grab this biomass. Objective. Hub upgrade, additional power. Advice. When planning the construction of buildings, note the placement of conveyor belts. Caution. Overloading the power network guarantees suboptimal performance. <laughs> yeah. So what I'm doing is I'm basically... Um, not enough space in inventory. Okay. One second. I'll put those in there for now. Essentially, you could see how quickly it was starting to burn through that fuel. And the reason for that is because um, we're, we're, there's a lot more demand on the network, basically. So we'll put that in there. Put that in there. So biomass is going to become a problem. Pretty soon, we're going to need to have two generators on the go. Um, and that's going to be a problem in itself. Now, press the Q key. And we've now got logistics. Conveyor poles and conveyor belts. Conveyor poles can be used to connect to conveyor belts. You can adjust the height of the pole. So if you want to elevate stuff, we can actually raise this up as we build it. Uh, and the conveyor belt is going to take iron plates, and this is going to belt things between our different elements. Now, currently, we have no splitting or merging possibility. That's going to be another tech unlock for later. But we do have access to foundations now. I think there's a mislabeling on these foundations. This is 8x4, this is 8x2. This should actually say 8 meters squared by 4 because it's actually 8 by 8 by 4 deep. So it should say 8x8x4 eight by eight by or 8 meters squared by 4. And it did confuse me slightly when I first looked at this. But basically all the tiles are 8x8 eight eight meters and it, all this is is how deep they are. These are the equivalent ramps for those foundations. All they take is concrete. So if you've got concrete, you can make foundations, and foundations really help when you're building. Same thing with the wall. Um, these can build onto foundations at the side, and that's the all the stuff that we just unlocked. Let's now select our next hub upgrade, which is this one that's going to give us more slots. It's going to give us the miner, which is very, very important because it completes our automation. We're going to have to stop running around. We can actually build this now. We just need to build a bunch of stuff. And the storage container was going to stop us from basically wasting things. It's going to provide us with a buffer. So that upgrade is pretty important uh, in tech terms. Let's have a quick look at what's required for the conveyor belt. It's iron plates. So we're going to need a lot of iron plates. We're going to go and get rid of... Let's think. We're going to need the iron ore. Get rid of the wood for now. We need to empty our backpack. Uh, put the copper ore in there, don't care about that yet. Copper ore can go in there. We're going to focus on iron construction initially. We're going to automate the iron construction is what we're going to do. We've got stuff. I might build a crafting station over here. Uh, but what I want to do is lay down foundations as well. So let me grab a bunch of concrete and we'll make sure we've got... We can actually lay a bunch of tiles out. So we'll grab all of this limestone out of here. Uh, we're going to go over here and build a crafting station because we're going to spend a bit of time around this area I think again don't be afraid to put things down because you can just rip them up at the end of the day and move them uh, we're going to need a craft bench which is one of these things uh, we'll just dump it there it really doesn't matter where it goes funnily enough it doesn't need power either uh, so concrete we'll build a lot of that this will save time running around. Let's just check our production chain. We'll grab the end products out. So obviously with a production chain, you effectively work backwards. When you want to empty it, you start off downstream. Uh, grab the things out of here. Which we've just done. And you put the iron ingots in there. Why have you stopped? No power. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. 
I thought I heard the power go, but thought it was just a monster going... Rrr. So, when the power trips, it's because your power draw is higher than your power production, or it's because you run out of fuel. Uh, we don't know which it is just yet. So we're going to figure that out now. Luckily, we grabbed a whole bunch of leaves. Once the automation's up and running, you'll find yourself effectively running around, um, creating biomass for a while. Because that's the main thing you need to do, is keep the power running. If you play this in multiplayer, one of you can focus on kind of things like this. Yeah, look. No power, because no fuely. So two things. One, we're going to grab a lot of biomass, and we're going to throw that in the back. I mean, I filled this up with biomass, if you remember, a second ago. And it's just, look at it, just chews through it. Uh, the other thing is... Oh, we don't have a research station yet, do we? Okay. We don't actually have the analysis station yet. We just have a lot of windows. Crashed windows things. Um, when you do... Um, put the fuel back in. You have to turn the generator back on. Oh, no, you don't. It's only of the power trips later on. Forget that. Ignore that. Right, let's get some stuff going here. We don't have the miners, but we do have conveyor belts. So we're going to move. Now, we don't want to think about where our production chain's going to go. Uh, so that looks like a big open area that way. So what we'll probably do is we'll bring up the foundation. We'll go with 8x2. And how we orient this first tile is going to dictate things for the future. Uh, so we need to be careful how we lay this. Probably like that. So we can build in that direction. Let's get rid of that. Like so. Uh, we've got a bit more concrete left. Now, I'll just show you something. You can hotbar this. So if we press the Q key and you hover over this item and press one of the keys at the bottom, like zero, it will put it there on the hotbar. So now I don't have to do that. I just press zero and it puts it straight into my hand. So that's a very handy tip for you. Right, let's get these smelters offline. Uh, let's grab the stuff out of there. We're just going to go ahead and deconstruct this. Okay, and we'll deconstruct that. And we'll deconstruct that. You'll find you're having to sort of um, reorganize things a few times. Be, you know, don't be afraid to do it, is what I would say. Uh, so let's go production, constructor. See, now we've got this tiled floor. Not only does it um, make it nice and level, but it, it just actually helps laying things out. So we'll put that like that, but we'll spin it around. And we'll line up another constructor. We'll hold the control key so we get that alignment bar. Um, we'll put that like that. Leaving a decent gap because later on, if you want to build like mergers and splitters and things, it kind of helps to think ahead a little bit. Um, now we're going to have power pole, which is going to connect to those two, and then I'm going to route the power out the way over here. Let's see, let's put it at the back there. That's going to connect to there. It's going to connect to here. And that will further the power down that way. Awesome. Right, what are you doing? Nothing. Full backpack, okay. Right, what we want to do is we want to belt this into constructor. So the hotbar 3 down there is already set up for a conveyor belt. And if you click on it and start walking, it tells you below what materials it needs. Uh, concrete is used to make the actual, um, what do they call it, the, the stand that it's on. So we're going to come 
don't want to go that way, so we go like that. And then we're going to come this way like this. Okay, I think we just run out of material. Yeah, iron plates are missing. And you see stuff is starting to come off the line. Iron ingots. And we need iron plates. So what we can do is we can grab a bunch of these. Like that. Jump on the belt because it moves. When you're on the belt going the way it's going, you move a lot quicker. Then we'll connect that power line to that. Back to that. Jump on the back and we'll say, make iron plates, please. And here's a bunch of ingots. While it's doing that, we'll link that up to there. But we'll just put that machine on standby. Actually, that's not going to do anything until we assign it. Uh, the red means it's not doing anything. The flashing lights. Green means it's active. Blue means it's kind of waiting for resources to come through. So if it's loading resources or it's missing a resource, it'll generally flash in blue. Now, one thing to pay attention is construction rates, okay? This is going to take uh, two iron ingots at a rate of 30 per minute, and it's going to produce one iron plate at a rate of 15 per minute. Now, a belt can hold 60 items per minute on it. And if we have a look at how quickly we're producing this stuff downstream... We are producing 30 per minute, right? Which basically means, <coughs> excuse me, it basically means that 30 per minute, this belt will be running at half capacity. Now, at the moment, it looks full because it's compressed. But when it's chucking out 30 per minute, this belt will only be half full, which is something to bear in mind later because what it really means is two of these smelters, if they're running at 30 per minute, two of the smelters can feed into one belt and make the belt run at capacity at 60 per minute. That's a normal conveyor belt. It runs at 60 per minute. Uh, the next upgrade on the belt will run at 120 a minute, and the one after that will run at 240 per minute, but that's later down the line. We don't have mergers yet, so we can't actually merge two belts into one, but it is something to think about for later on. So let's go and get this fed into here, and then we can automate that part of it. So we'll click on that. Maybe we'll have enough stuff now. No, we need 16 things, which we can get from here. Yay, we win. So we can click that, and like that, and there you go. We've just automated some part of our factory, which is great. It means we're now producing iron plates um, automatically, as long as we keep the lights on, which is nice. The only thing that's not automated is the feeding of iron ore into the uh, smelter, which is something we're going to have to keep for now um, manually doing... Iron ore, iron ore, iron ore. That needs iron ore. So this, th until we get the next tech unlock, which is very, very soon, we're going to have to keep doing this, fortunately. We'll load that into there. We'll take those iron ingots and we'll load that into there. Now, the iron ingots, although we can't belt them over, we can still manually load them into here. We're just waiting for some iron plates to make the conveyor. So we're going to do that. So we're going to say, you're going to make iron rods, and we'll load up with iron ingots. Sweet. So that's two things on the go. While that's happening, I'm going to run over here and check the power. Now, be wary of all this toxic gas area here. If you get too close to that, you start taking damage. Like this. See? You're in it before you know it. Now, when we get the chainsaw, we'll be able to chop down trees and get a lot of biomass very, very quickly. But for now, it's got 168. For now, we've got to do it the old-fashioned way. So we'll just grab any leaves we can get. We'll take the biomass out. Uh, what else have we got? And then we'll biomass. Notice this biomass wood and biomass leaves. Basically, as you chop down trees and pick up bits of wood, 
you'll end up with leaves or wood and you can convert both into biomass uh, that's how that works now i've run out of storage of biomass here which is a bit of a problem so we'll load that up to 200 and we'll stack that on top of that one so we've only got one stack of biomass left so we're going to have to go and get some more stuff very shortly for now i think i'd like to get a bit more concrete so we can build some more foundation while we wait for those plates to be made let's grab that grab that and we'll leg it to the crafting bench do you see how we're just not really using copper right now like occasionally we need to make some cable and wire for power poles but apart from that we don't really have too much of a need for it focus on iron that's what we need to do just focus on iron Top right, that goal says 20 concrete bar, uh, bags, uh, 20 cables, uh, which we have that. We have 20 concrete bags, no problem. 75 iron bars, we have 100. And we just need 100 iron plates. Now the iron plates we can get, quite probably. Since this thing's been busy doing its thing. We have 52 there, so we've got 65, so we're almost... We've almost got enough for that. Can we load some more iron ingots? Yes, we can. It's automated. So things are starting to come together now, which is great. Once we get this tech unlocked, we can get the miner in there, and then the production chain will be fully automated, and all we've got to do is keep the power on. So we're really starting to make progress now. Uh, right, we'll drop the bars in there we'll drop the concrete in there i'm just shift clicking by the way if you shift click it'll send everything over uh if you control is it hang on if you right click an item it splits it see if you right click it'll split it again uh and if you left drag it it'll, and if you click sort it'll sort it like that 100 of those you see we're very very close there very very close in fact can we make any iron plates here we'll just We'll just knock up the rest by hand. We need, what, 35? Easily done. Uh, we'll knock those into there. And upgrade. Upgrade four. New buildings, plane upgraded. Congratulations. You have unlocked hub feature, additional biomass generator. New buildings, which can be found in the build menu. Ninth objective, hub upgrade, molecular analysis. Note, to ensure full mastery of skills and equipment, I have been asked to not interfere with this last objective. <laughs> Good luck. You're on your own, kid. Yeah, so what we've got now is one other biomass generator, and, and this is quite simply because, you know, at some point soon, our uh, consumption is going to exceed the production of the power, and we're going to have to bring this other one online. But for now, we'll just switch that one off. We don't need that one. Um, which is fine. We'll select the new objective, which is hub upgrade five. This is going to give us a, a biomass burner. So this is a biomass burner that we can stand outside of the hub and it will give us a space elevator. The elevator is key to unlocking the next tech level upgrade. So this is quite an important milestone. So we'll select it, but we're not going to focus on it initially. Uh, we're going to initially focus on automating, um, our process. Limestone, let me just grab all of that. What else have we got in here? Biomass. Um, did we... In our hub, did we get the research center yet? No, we didn't. Okay. Uh, build miners to fully automate resource mining. Add buildings to your to-do list via the build menu. So the Mark 1 miner requires, if you look, the portable miner, of which we have one, plus these other things, right? So it's pretty easy for us to construct that now. In fact, that's exactly what we're gonna go and do. We're gonna go and build this thing. First of all, we're gonna run over here and grab the iron plates so that we can make some conveyors. And then we're gonna put the mining online. Pretty soon, this thing is gonna start to feel like a factory. Now, the other thing we've got uh, is the storage container this is incredibly useful i'm just going to pull it out of the way over here um but what we can do is we can belt that together like that everything that that now makes it's going to put into here and because of its space it is so much more capacity than this stack here 
which means if we're not paying attention, it will continue to throw things in there and it won't stop doing it, uh, which is a very big thing. Uh, so we'll take those out of there. They're going in storage. We build another one like that. Uh, it's lined up there. There you go. So now we don't need to worry about these things running out of space. Uh, we need to belt this in. But first thing we need to build is our miner. And then we can stop running around quite so much. You can see this stopped already, which you know, you know what that's going to be. Because it run out of stuff, didn't it? limestone right okay we'll pick this up uh, so we'll deconstruct it sorry hang on a sec I think my back no LMB to dismantle why won't you let me dismantle this I don't know why you can't dismantle that. You have to click pick up miner. How weird is that? It's like the only thing in the game that doesn't let you dismantle it. What? Um, production miner. There we go. Now, it, if you notice, it basically clicks on. It locks on like that. So what we want is it to be roughly pointing uh, in this direction like that. Set its output there. Uh, we could even go ahead and build another one here, if we wanted to. This. And then we're going to connect. Now this is where it gets careful. You have to be careful here, because if you connect that, and then you connect that, that power line is now full. It's four of four capacity. Uh, but luckily, it, we're not too worried, because it's actually linking downstream. So what I was going to say was, if this wasn't connect... Did you hear what just happened? Let's turn that off. So everything just went offline because we switched these beasts on and our little production generation thing just went, nope. <laughs> so <laughs> let's belt that in though uh, and get this thing ready. We'll just have one running initially. So how quickly does this produce stuff? 60 per minute. Remember, it doesn't have any kind of speed module. So it belts that, it produces at 60 per minute. And remember I said to you, the belt runs capacity at 60 per minute so this belt will be at capacity when it comes into here however it then comes into here and this thing can only take it at 30 per minute now what that means is one of those can drive two of these but we don't have the splitters yet we don't have the belt splitters which is deeply annoying because it means we can't actually make this efficient and split that belt and feed both of these machines from it so that's annoying. That one we're going to leave offline for now. We're going to have to restart the power now. Uh, let that do its thing. So let's run over here and sort the power out. We probably should go on a biomass run as well and just get a lot of biomass um, to feed the beast. But I might, I might do that off camera because it's just me running around picking up bushes. So I'll probably do that in between episodes. So you don't have to go ahead and watch that. Uh, but let's go and quickly have a look here at what happened. Uh, yeah, so look, it didn't actually run out of biomass, but what it did was when we put both mines online, it peaked. So in theory, we can probably turn this back on. And it's just about okay. Just. But if we was to put another miner online, or possibly even anything else online, we're going to trip the power again. Which is why we then need to bring the other one. The other... Um, generator online now where did I connect the I might actually put a power pole here and we'll connect that to there like that oh missing cable uh, cable That will connect that to here. And what we'll do is we'll disconnect. This is going to turn things offline temporarily. And we'll connect that into that. 
just to just to tidy things up a little bit like i say if you got to tidy as you go along because if you don't things quickly get out of hand uh so there you go we have current milestone let's see what we've got to make for that so we've got to get all this stuff into here so the quantities are getting big now 500 wires so now we're going to need to focus on copper a little bit uh, iron plates and iron rods well we're kind of making a lot of this stuff concrete is easy enough uh, in fact we could fill the concrete now that's no problem um, but you know a lot of this is now being automated the only thing we've got to do is make sure we've got the power going but there's a lot less running around now we have the, the semblances of a, a factory here this is probably going to want to have more material because this one's currently not being automatically fed this one is and if you look in storage, lo and behold, we've got things being made, which is great. But that's going to bring us to the end of this episode two. I uh, hope you've enjoyed that. In the next one, uh, in between the episode two and three, I'm just going to run around and quickly grab a load of biomass because that's just boring to watch. Uh, so I'll grab a lot of biomass to keep the beast going. And the next one, we're going to basically probably bring the second generator online and we'll smelt into here, get this going. We'll get the copper we need and so we can research the next hub upgrade five and that's going to take us towards the space elevator which is the thing that brings the next tier uh, along anyway that's it please give me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed that guys let me know if you're in, if uh, if you've got the game and what you think of it and until the next video take care happy manufacturing